Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Phoebus, and this is um, a video on working through the properties of exponents. This is going to cover three lessons, but the thing is, is that these lessons are pretty short, pretty sweet, pretty sweet, not sweet, pretty sweet, and um, are easy to kind of catch on. We've done some of this um, stuff before, so we're just going to do an extension of that. So. Um, again, if you have a copy of the notes, you should be following along. If you don't have a copy of the notes, you should be taking notes on paper. You can use these notes on future quizzes and tests. You can pause the video and start back up at any point in time. All right, the vocabulary words that you need to know um, is base in reference to exponents. A base is a piece that is kind of big and it has an exponent on it. So seven has, it's a base. And then x is a base with an exponent of 4 on it. And it tells you basically what value is being multiplied repeatedly over and over again. Another word that you need to know is denominator. Hopefully you know that. It's the bottom part of a fraction. If no denominator is shown, we automatically assume there's a 1 in the denominator. And numerator, which is the top part of the fraction. And a fraction must always have a numerator written. So we can't leave it blank. We have to put something in the numerator. Um, product is another word that you're going to need to know. It's the result of using multiplication. Quotient is the result you get after division. All right, and so we are on page 270 is where we're starting. We're using the properties of exponents to review. What we've got here is we've got 4 to the third, and we need to know that that means that this is 4 times 4 times 4. Now, that is a problem that you can work out, but I really want you to make sure that you understand that that little 3 exponent means that there's 3 numbers being multiplied together, and because the base is 4, those numbers that are being multiplied are the number 4. So that would mean x to the 6, there's 6 pieces that are being multiplied together, and those pieces that are being multiplied together are x's. So it's x times x times x times x times x times x. All right, with negative 2 to the fifth, we're going to have 5 negative 2. So that's going to be negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. And um, of course, our 4 to the third and negative 2 to the fifth are things that we could simplify later on, but we're really just kind of trying to get, make sure we're good on the ex, the idea of what the exponent is doing. Now, the negative 2 in the parentheses being raised to the fifth power is different than negative 2, no parentheses being raised to the fifth power. So the only piece that's being raised to the fifth, fifth power on this last um, portion is the 2. The negative is not included. Here in the um, previous example, we had negative 2 in the parentheses, and so we were including that negative when we were going through and we were um, doing our exponent. So for the last example, we only have five twos being multiplied together, and that negative just happens to be in the front of it. So you only use the exponent on the piece that it's on. All right, so in these boxes, we're going to fill in some things. And so I want you to fill in 2 to the x, 5 to the x, and 10 to the x. Again, if I'm going too fast, feel free to stop the video. And then in the first column, I want you to write 2 to the 4th, 2 to the 3rd, 2 squared. And then 5 to the 4th, 5 to the 3rd, 5 squared. And then 10 to the 4th, 10 to the 3rd, and 10 squared. And then I want you to actually figure out what those are. So if you haven't already yet, go ahead and pause the video, write these down, and then actually figure out what numbers there are. All right, so you should notice that as the exponents decrease, the answer is decreasing. So we are in the first column dividing by 2 each time. We have 2 to the 4th is 16, 2 cubed is 8, 2 squared is 4. So our numbers are decreasing, and we are dividing by 2. 5 to the 4th is 625, 5 cubed is 125, 5 squared is 25, we're dividing by 5 each time. 10 to the 4th is 10,000, 10 to the 3rd is 1,000, 10 squared is 100, we're dividing by 10 each time. And each of these numbers are, of course, the same. We're dividing by 2, we're dividing by 5, dividing by 10, they're the same as the bases that we had above, 2, 5, and 10. All right, so if we continue that pattern, 
into the zero and the negative exponents, hopefully we can come up with an idea or we can kind of see what's going on. So two to the zero, or two to the first, sorry. Remember that we're gonna be dividing by two each time to get to the next number. So two to the first is two, we, are, we know that. If we took that two and divided by two, as the pattern suggests from before, two divided by two is one. So two to the zero power is one. If we divide that by two, we will end up with one half. Okay, so five to the first power is five. Take that five divided by five and we get one. Divide that one by five and we get one fifth. So 10 to the first power is 10. Divide that 10 by 10, we get one. And divide that one by 10 and we get one tenth. Now, the interesting thing here, if you look at the zero power, there is an interesting piece that happens. And then if you start looking at the negative one, we still have two, but now it's in the denominator. We still have five, but now it's in the denominator. We still have 10, but now it's in the denominator. So these negative exponents also have a special property that go along with them as well. All right. So when zero is the exponent, the answer is one. There is one exception to that, zero to the zero power, because zero to usually any power is zero. So there's an, an issue when you try to give one problem two different answers. So we say that it's undefined. So zero to the zero power doesn't work, but anything else to the zero power is one. All right, negative exponents usually lead to fractions. Not always, but most of the time they do. So just keep in mind, if you have a negative exponent, that means that there's probably going to be a fraction. If you don't have a fraction already, you're probably going to get a fraction. All right, so the zero property of exponents says that if I have anything, and it doesn't matter if it's a variable or a whole bunch of variables wrapped in parentheses or a fraction or a negative number or a decimal, anything with the exception of zero, to the zero power is one. So anything with the exception of zero to the zero power is one. So that means that number one, we've got w to the zero power, that's one. Number two, we got a thousand to the zero power, that's one. Number three, we got two to the zero power. That's one. I love these. And um, so anything that you see to the zero power, you can, I do a lot of just marking through and canceling it out and just kind of getting rid of it because it becomes a one and then you're doing a lot of multiplication, especially if you look at some of the other examples coming up. Um, multiplication, multiplication, if you're multiplying by one, you're not going to change anything. So really, that one just kind of goes away. It doesn't really completely go away, but it turns into a one and it's not necessary anymore. All right, so four, all of that is one because all of that is being raised to the zero power and anything, with the exception of zero, to the zero power is one. All right, now on number five, only one part is being raised to the zero power. G is being raised to the zero power. So because just that piece is one, I can kind of mark it out. And I can see that I'm gonna have a four and an H cubed left behind. And so my answer is four H cubed. So try number six really quick, what do you get? All of that becomes a one and one times p to the seventh is p to the seventh. I like the zero property of exponents. It's easy. As long as you know that um, it's the piece that has the zero exponent, that becomes a one. Now, if there's no exponent written, like um, on this four, there's no exponent written, there's a one, there's an automatic one there. But if there's no exponent written, you can't just get rid of it. It has to have a zero exponent in order for you to turn it into a one. Sometimes people get confused there. All right, so let's look at negative exponents. So the negative property of exponents says that if I have a negative exponent, I'm gonna move it to the denominator and it's gonna become a positive exponent. And 
if I have a negative exponent in the denominator, it's going to move up to, and it's going to kind of move up to the numerator. Here we don't have a numerator written, but when it moves, um, it becomes a positive exponent. And usually your goal is to turn all negative exponents into positive exponents. We don't want any negative exponents at all. That's most of the time the goal. Um, so we want to make sure that we are writing with positive exponents. So to turn a negative exponent into a positive, you're going to cross the line and change the sign of the exponent. Okay, and I usually like to look at that as like a red flag. It's a negative exponent. That piece is unhappy where it is. Negative exponent, negative kind of mood or demeanor. It's unhappy where it is. And the only other place it can go is if it's in the numerator, it can go to the denominator. Or if it's in the denominator, it can move to the numerator. So I usually think about them as the negative means, hey, move me. It's a sign. I'm unhappy. Move me to where I want to go. And the negative goes away after you move it because then it's happy. It has to be happy at some point in time. You can't just spend forever switching it back and forth between numerator and denominator. All right, so let's look at number seven. So because I have nine to the negative second power, right now it's in the numerator, the nine is. It doesn't want to be in the numerator, so I'm going to move it to the denominator. And I move the whole entire piece. Now, something has to be in the numerator. So because I've left an empty spot in the numerator, I have filled this with a one. So anytime you go to see that your numerator is blank, you have to put a one there. Now, because I can figure out what 9 squared is, I need to simplify this. So anytime you have a number raised to a power, you need to simplify it. So I'm going to simplify this as 1 over 81. All right, let's look at number 8. Our number 8, x is to the negative fifth, but it's in the denominator. So that negative means that it doesn't want to be in the denominator. It wants to move up to the numerator. So when I move it up, I can put a 1 there with it because that 1 is still there. Or I can just write x to the fifth. Now, on number nine, you have three separate pieces. You have a five, you have an a, and you have a b. You have to look at everybody's exponent and only move the pieces that have a negative exponent. So five doesn't have an exponent written. It's an automatic one. A has an exponent that's a positive 3, and B has an exponent that's a negative 2. B is the one that wants to move. Everybody else is going to stay in the numerator. The B is going to move to the denominator. So I'm going to keep the 5A cubed up on top because their exponents were originally positive. When the B to the negative 2 moves to the denominator, its exponent becomes positive. All right, let's look at number 10. So 2 has its own exponent. It has an exponent of 1. It's positive. Don't move 2. But C has its exponent with a negative. And so we need to move just that piece to the denominator. So when I do that, it's going to look like 2 over C. Now, if I wanted to write C to the first, I could. But C to the first is the same as C. So usually we're trying to write this as simply as possible. All right, number 11, we have all of these pieces, both pieces being raised to the negative 1 power. So what that means is that now I have to realize that both pieces need to move. If I want to move both pieces at the same time, they have to be in the parentheses with the negative or they each have to individually have their own exponent. We're going to talk about how to do that a little bit more later. But I can move both of them to the denominator. And again, if nothing is in the numerator, I have to write a 1. So only if I see parentheses around the multiple pieces do I move multiple pieces to the denominator. So look at 10 and 11 and make sure you understand the difference between 10, how 10 is written, how 11 is written, and also how their answers are written. Because those are two totally different problems. And I'll have a lot of people, they'll be given a problem like 10, but they'll try to write it like the answer in 11. But you have to remember that each piece, the number, the coefficient, 
and each of the variables they have their own exponent and you have to do what each piece's exponent is telling you. All right, on number 12, we're going to get more into division later. On number 12, you need to think about this in terms of a fraction. So think of this as 3 eighteenths. That can be simplified as a fraction. 3 eighteenths can be simplified to 1 sixth. And then, so I'm going to write that 1 sixth out in just a second. But then I need to look. A doesn't want to be on top. We're going to move it to the bottom. B doesn't want to be on the bottom and wants to move to the top. But look at C. C is positive. So C is going to stay in the denominator. So 1 sixth is there because I reduced that fraction. B to the sixth is on top because it was in the denominator and it was negative. So it's going to go up to the numerator. A to the negative fourth was not happy upstairs. So we moved it downstairs to the denominator and c to the third remained in the denominator because it was a positive. And notice everybody now has a positive exponent. You do need to make sure though you think of these as simplified fractions as well if you come across any of that. All right, so let's look at the multiplication property of exponents. The multiplication property of exponents says a to the m times a to the n is equal to a to the m plus n. And we've talked about that before when we had something like, you know, x squared times x cubed. We added those exponents together. So when multiplying powers with the same base, we're going to add the exponents. Don't forget to multiply the coefficients. So we're going to come across some, some examples that have that because we're still dealing with the pro or with multiplying. So the numbers that are involved um, will have to be multiplied. It's when do you, what do you do with things that have exponents? So if I look at problem number one, problem number one, I have two pieces where the bases are the same. So I've got four and four to the fifth. Now some of you will think, well, I can just go ahead and stick that in a calculator, right? Four times four to the fifth. But think about this as properties of exponents where there's really a four to the first power there times four to the fifth. And since they both have the same base, four, we can add their exponents. So we can really write this as four to the one plus five and one plus five is four to the six. And then we can stick that in the calculator. Four to the six is 4,096. So this is just kind of a, a way to help you simplify before you just automatically reach for a calculator. Um, and so we're talking about, you know, maybe fewer keystrokes, fewer things that you have to type into the calculator. Um, but then it also extends to variables. So let's look at number two, see how they all have a base of two. So this is really two to the first power. And I'm going to add one plus two plus three. One plus two plus three is six. So this is two to the sixth. And two to the sixth power is 64. All right, here is where you need to start worrying about the multiplying your coefficients because two and five are not the same base. Here we had the same base, two, two, two. Here we had the same base, four, four. Here we don't have the same base, two times five. We're gonna have to multiply that out and get 10. N to the fourth times N to the fourth, however, have the same base. So I'm going to need to add their exponents. So that's going to be N to the four plus four, which is N to the eighth. And so my final answer is 10 N to the eighth. <coughs> Excuse me. So you have to take care of the multiplying component because these are not the same base, you're still just multiplying these values together. And then with things that have the same base and exponents, you're gonna add their exponents together and create your answer. So I'm gonna try to do this kind of in chunks. And when we pick up extra variables, I'm gonna just do the variable pieces with it. All right, so let's look at number four. We have coefficients. We've got six and five. We're gonna multiply them together and get 30. We have r to the first and r to the second, r squared, and we're going to add those exponents and get r to the third, and so our answer is 30 r to the third. All right, 
For number five, we actually have three things being multiplied. So we've got seven times 10 times eight, that's 560. We have u to the third, and then down here there was another u, so that's u to the fourth. And then we have v to the third, v to the fifth, and then down here I covered it up, there's another v to the third. And if you add all those exponents together, you get v to the 11th. So this is 560, u to the fourth, v to the eleventh. And so I chunk this. I take care of the coefficients first. I take care of one variable, I take care of another variable, and then I string them all together. Now, um, when I go through and I write my answer, I like them to be in alphabetical order, but that's just me. If you wanted to write 560 v to the eleventh and u to the fourth, you would totally be right as well. It's just the way that I, I do choose to do it, I choose to do it alphabetically. All right, number six, take care of the numbers first. So we're gonna do nine times negative four and get negative 36. Then we're gonna do our x's, x to the first and x to the fifth. Let's add those exponents and get x to the sixth. And then we've got y squared times y squared. We're gonna add the two plus two and get y to the fourth. So our final answer is negative 36, x to the sixth y to the fourth. All right, so let's look at number seven. Um, on seven, we have a one in the very, very front. So I'm gonna do one times four and get four. I've got my e's, so e to the one plus negative two. One plus negative two is gonna give us e to the negative one. We're gonna have to move that in a minute, but let's take care of our f's. So f to the one plus six is f to the seventh. So if I wrote this all out, I would have four e to the negative one, f to the seventh. But we're not allowed to write our exponents as negative numbers or leave them, I guess, as negative numbers. So we need to rewrite that e with a positive exponent. And so that remember that negative exponent, all it's asking you to do is to move it. Right now it's in a numerator. It doesn't want to be in the numerator, so we're just going to move the e, just the e, because it's the only one with a negative exponent. So we're going to leave 4f to the 7th on top. That e to the negative 1 moves to the bottom, becomes e to the positive 1, or just e. All right. Let's look at number eight. Now, on number eight, if you notice, I've got a six squared and a six to the negative one. We're still multiplying. Even though parentheses have been introduced, we're still just multiplying these together. So these sixes have the same base, so let's add their exponents. So that would be six to the two plus negative one, two plus negative one is one, six to the first power is six. So we didn't even need a calculator for that at all. Some people like to plug it into the calculator. You can still get an answer, but if it's as easy as adding two numbers together that aren't too bad, you might be able to cut down your work on your, for yourself. All right, I've got an h squared here and an h squared here. We're gonna add those exponents and get h to the fourth. I don't have any j's over here, but I do have a j to the fourth here, so it's not like I have to combine it with anything. But j to the fourth, or you could think of it as j to the zero, there are no j's over here, plus, j, uh, plus four for the four over here. So there's a couple different ways you can think about it, or you can just say, well, I have j to the fourth. Piece all of those answers together, we've got six, h to the fourth, j to the fourth. So if you think you can keep going, pause the video, see if you can work a couple of these out. I'm gonna keep going explaining it, but you can, unpause the video and check yourself and see if you're right. <coughs> All right, number nine, we're gonna multiply the coefficients together. Negative three times negative seven is 21. With our t's, we've got four plus negative two, which is gonna be t squared. And with w's, we've got five plus three, which is eight. So we've got 21 t squared w to the eighth. On number 10, we've got three times negative two, that's negative six. We've got m squared times m to the fourth. That's gonna be addition of two plus four, that's m to the sixth. And with n to the negative five, and then we're gonna add five, we're gonna get into the zero, but we already know n to the zero is one. So we really have negative six times one, which is negative six, and then there's an m to the sixth. 
All right, 11, we're going to multiply 4 times 5 and get 20. A to the negative third times A to the negative third is going to be A to the negative six. B to the negative two uh, times B to the fifth is going to be B to the third. So if I'm left with 20, A to the negative six, B to the third, I have to fix that negative exponent. So I'm going to move it to the denominator. Everything else is going to stay up in the numerator. So I've got 20 B cubed over A to the sixth. All right, number 12, I've got negative 1 times negative 7. That's a 7. I've got x to the 7th and an x cubed. So I've got x to the 10th, and I've got y squared times y. That's y to the 3rd. So my answer is 7x to the 10th, y to the 3rd. All right, so that's it for that video. So we are working with negative exponents, zero exponents, and then we're working with the multiplication property, finding the product and making sure that we are multiplying the coefficients together and then adding the pieces or the exponents on the corresponding uh, variables. So I'll see you in the next video.